autodidacte, elle a tracé sa route de la Pampa uruguayenne à New York avec des vêtements chics, éthiques et écologiques, toujours fonctionnels. Elle a remporté le CFDA for American Women's Wear Designer of the Year cette année. Pour elle, le développement durable n'est pas une posture et les restrictions un appel à créer. C'est sa première fois à Paris. Hello Gabriella Hurst. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're showing for the first time in Paris. Congratulations. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. Thank you for having me and I'm very excited. I'm very grateful uh, to be here and in such times to have the dream of showing in Paris is something that has elevated the whole team and I and put the collection with a bit more spice. Was this something that has been planned for a long time or has it happened recently that you chose to come here? It was recently that we decided to, to come and because most of our collection is done in uh, Italy and so it made sense and then we gratefully got accepted by the Chambre Syndicale and we're here. Congratulations. You've also recently just been awarded the American Women Designer of the Year by the CFDA. How is that going to help elevate your brand? I'm sure that's a big milestone. Again, another one of those things that you're extremely grateful to have for your team and I in, in, in these times that lifts your spirit is a greatest gift. And I, and I think that um, it's, it's fantastic for, to get momentum to show in Paris. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. I am scary more relaxed than usual which I'm starting to get concerned why I'm so <laughs> relaxed. But I think that I feel pretty confident on the work that we have done and, and now I'm feeling excited to show it. Was there a particular reason besides the fact that um, obviously your production is in, is in Italy and Europe that you wanted to show here? Does Paris have a special significance for you as a designer? For every designer to show in Paris is a dream. And for us, when we looked at it, we are New Yorker, we're an American brand and we love New York. And then when we started to see um, the logistics, given the pandemic and also the logistics and carbon footprint, it made more sense to show in Paris and it's a dream. Americans and Europeans and French women in particular dress very differently in my opinion. What do you think are the main differences between American and French style? You know, it's funny because I grew up in Uruguay, South America, and I actually went to a British school. So I grew up looking at Europe as a cultural reference. So l having that upbringing and then living in New York for 20 years has given us a, a specific perspective. I think that it's very hard to top a chic French woman. You said it. <laughs> What have been some of the challenges of organizing a fashion show in the current climate, which, as we know, has been a little bit tricky? I think the, uh, the, the number one challenge is to make sure that everyone's safe, that we have the whole team safe and that we're taking all the precautions needed. And then we decided to really do the most complicated collection we could do. Most of all the collection is uh, handcrafted. There's a lot of handwork in the collection. So let's just add another level of complication <laughs> to, this, to this equation. And so, you know, it doesn't, ha it, I didn't want it to stop our creative development. And we've always already been operating in a crisis in our head. We have designed this company and these collections under the environmental crisis. Mm -hmm. So in our head, we're always putting ourselves 10 years from now when we have water shortages and lack of natural resources to produce. So that's how we're already in this limited time, in this limited resources frame. So we're kind of... And to react to that, I think a lot of people in the fashion industry, a lot of brands in particular, have... Um, kind of jumped on the bandwagon recently, claiming that they also want um, a new fashion world, a new future. Do you believe that things are going to change after all of this? Not just in fashion. When we look at, at, at climate change and what we are facing as a, as a species, um, we all, scientists, everyone that is interested and passionate, knows that we have all the elements to change. The, the main problem is that can we change fast enough? Yes. And if one thing the pandemic has teach us that we can change our behavior fast enough. So for me, that's the silver lining. Yes, we can change fast enough if we all consciously and collectively make the decision to do so. 
Tell us more about the inspiration of this recent collection, what you're going to be showing. It really started at the beginning of the pandemic. I got obsessed with, very strangely, with Formula One. There was this show called uh, Formula One Drive to Survive. Okay. And then I was the speed. And that kept me grounded somehow during the pandemic, the speed. And then I started to also see racing and horse racing and and different sports with 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 horses and it, it was about speed you know i, I start collection from a con subconscious process and then i start mm -hmm. to understand so it's this context of going fast as we need to change fast but also taking the time to make things slow so interesting um you take inspiration from women's metal and history how does that translate into your collections? I think that the woman that we envision is always a woman that is in a leadership position and that she has power to, to change. And so we're always looking at different women in history or actual women or women that represent the values. And usually is a woman or a person that uses their focus and their platform to serve others. So that's always the, the type of women that we look up to. I also know that sustainability is at the core of your brand. We've discussed it earlier. But how does working with constraints drive your creativity? Is it, is it actually a positive process or is that...? For me, yes. For me, I think that when you focus creativity, when you give creativity parameters, it becomes laser sharp and more purposeful. Mm. So for me, yes, I enjoy it very much. Can you give us some concrete examples? We've done all different challenges that we have achieved and overcome. And the next one that for us is to move out of new or virgin materials. Mm. So it's basically to repurpose, recycle, and always keeping at the high end, uh, high quality craftsmanship and, um, and uh, materials and fabrics. So our new challenge is to try and be by next year or early 2022, at least 80% of all our uh, production and, and sampling is made out of repurposed fabrics. Your work seems to avoid trends, focusing on <laughs> elegance instead, as we can see. <laughs> can you tell me a little bit more about the women that inspire you and where you, um, where you get all your ideas from? Well, I love... Uh, women profoundly and I think this is the main reason of what I do do my job and also I understand women I understand our bodies and I always say that if I didn't have water retention I probably wouldn't be a designer but <laughs> what I really um, I love design wise is trying to create clothes that you want to wear for the rest of your life that you buy it and are objects of your life that you have a few but good mm -hmm. and that we frame the woman it's not about the clothes, it's about framing her character and her personality. And the biggest compliment I get is when women tell me that they feel like the bosses when they're wearing one of our suits or they feel empowered by our clothes. So I think that giving women the worry free about your clothes, we took care that your clothes is well made, well sourced, protecting you, making you look good. I want to go back a little bit and for you to tell us how you got into fashion, because I know that the story is not as obvious <laughs> as it may seem. <laughs> no, it's uh, actually, I never even think I was going to be in fashion. It wasn't even an option because I grew up in rural Uruguay in, the, in, the, in a ranch in South America, closest city, two hours and a half, and with a lot of fantasy. But I had uh, a very strong gaucho tradition and my mother had very few clothes, but they were very well made with European fabrics by the family seamstress with her own um, tailor made, so it was basically couture. And, but my first inkling of fashion was watching Cinderella when I was a little girl. The Disney girl. movie. Yes, when I, I think I was like, I don't know, six maybe, and the scene where Cinderella uh, gets transformed by the little mice and the birds, it was like, wow, you can transform yourself with clothes. And I remember running to my grandmother's, um, in Latin America, you live with your grandmother, to your grandmother, my grandmother's closet and start cutting her lace nightgowns that are like all hand laced. And she saw me and instead of killing me, she started laughing because I was trying to make a dress. Quite sweet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
<laughs> There's an expression in France um, to design a fashion mistake, which I'm sure you'll be aware of, called a fashion faux pas. Do you think there is such a thing, or is it not possible to have restrictions on the way that we should dress? I, I think that as long as you're expressing yourself, this is why we love fashion, because it expresses who who you are, and we all have that individuality. But I like the concept of style, where it's not about the clothes, it's about how you treat others. And I think that's that's really like, you cannot have a faux pas if you treat people right. Do you look back on some of your outfits and regret wearing it? No, not no? really. That's no. good then. <laughs> Before I let you go, we have a tradition here with all the designers that come and visit us um, to ask them to bring an object or something that's close to them or from the studio. Do you have something today? I actually have something very special, which is this notebook that I wrote, bought in saint in an um, art uh, shop, bookshop that sells colors next to the Beaux Arts where we're, mm -hmm. we're showing. And I bought this notebook and as a sensitive, uh, person, I needed to process everything what the pandemic and the changes that in New York happened. So I decided for 40 days to draw every day sketches and I called it Cura para las almas, which means cure for the souls. So it's basically drawings that I've done wow. for every day for 40 days and anyone can do it. And it has really helped me. It was a journey that I got into. I really... Did you do it at the same time every day or was it... No, different times of the day, but every day, no matter how tired I was at the end of the day, I had to do one. Do they have a special meaning or is it just whatever came out of your mind? Whatever came out mind? and sometimes they would come the night before and then I would replicate them. I feel like this is a work of art. Well, I gave it to my best friend and she's going to keep it. So maybe one day. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so thank much. You. That is stunning. Cool. Well, thank you so much thank for you. coming. Thank I you. Hope to see you soon.